The night before the battle, slept in a hole in the desert uh, about three miles north of the city. And I say slept because none of us slept, didn't sleep one second. What you kept seeing was here and there almost flickering like fireflies or guys checking their luminescent watches. And you just see it, isn't it? Oh, I got checking, checking. Apparently hiding. When you can just look around and see like miles of men and machines get ready to try and take the city, you knew that it was gonna be big. Early in the morning of November 9th, six battalions of American and Iraqi forces assembled along the northern edge of Fallujah. Their mission will be to clear every insurgent out of every one of Fallujah's 50,000 buildings so only Fallujah residents can return. It was pitch black that night, pitch black, because they did the attack on uh, no moon, no illumination at all. And you could hear them from the mosque shouting to each other, let them come in, let them come in, you know, never run, never show them that you're afraid. All of a sudden, we had Humvees blasting ACDC, and we're like, let's go in, let's get it over with, let's go home. It's not a general's war. It's a war that's, that's fought by the corporals and the sergeants and the non-commissioned officers taking charge of their fire teams and their squads. I knew this was an Al-Qaeda thing. This was a foreign fighter thing. I knew this was a, whoever the hell wanted to fight us in the whole world was coming to Fallujah. You're about to walk through fire, the hottest trial by fire of your lives. But I know each and every one of you standing here breathes fire. Master your fear. You will not yield, not even to yourself. And we will all come home together. Hoorah! Send your fire element to a specific position. Issue a move-go command. By default, your teammates follow where you lead. I'm moving. Yeah. First squad, Gator. We'll hold here while you clear these structures.
staged breach. Issue a move go command on a closed door, and your team will stack up and wait for your signal. You got it. When ready, look toward the door to order them to breach. Your fire element will flood the room. Fuck that. 
Good thing they always miss, right? Screws, hold the position. Ready to first squad. Lose your hold of your building on our route marked with a black flag. Copy first squad. That's a command and control point. You'll have to clear it. House is secure. We're moving on. Negative first squad. Rally on Gator and stand by. Uh, yes, sir. Roger that. Moving to Gator. Every time we would go into one of those buildings, you never know what to expect. And as soon as I walk in, I see a machine gun right in front of my face, maybe 10 feet, 15 feet from me, right in front of my face. Going first and playing Russian roulette every day is not good for your mind, you know? The way I did it with my Marines is like, you know, the person who goes in first is never wrong. They have the most to fear. The only way you can clear a city is you have to search every house, you have to search every room, and you have to root out every insurgent. We're doing our methodical house clearing work, and that call comes with the radio. You hear them we're attacking, we're a block away. And you just think, oh, like, please let that be outgoing. Source west of your position. Understood. 
still ready to. Change of plans. Kilo's in trouble. We're gonna bail him out. Balcony, watch out!
This is the enemy we're facing here. They're vicious, they have a lot of tenacity, and they're a lot smarter than we think. And so for me, it was kind of a reality check. This is what this battle is gonna be like. Men like Sarkari and Bin Laden, they, want, they, they don't care if they have to destroy everything to get what they want. If he wasn't stopped, why wouldn't a guy like Al Zakari continue? Ask yourself that. You know, in the first two days, we were not even into like the main battle of it. First two days was just like an appetizer for what was going to happen. It just kicked us in the balls and realized that, you know, we're not superhuman here. We're actually getting killed. Everything kind of hits home after you've seen somebody die. And when you're sitting there and it's quiet and you're sitting there by yourself, you know, and you're waiting for the attack to happen, that's, that's when your mind starts wandering. There's this sense now that our technology, our you know, drone warfare, guided missiles, that they in some way inoculate us to the ageless nature of war and the brutality of it. And they don't. Take every step like your life depends on it. Because for us, it did.